Hello everyone and welcome to Simpson Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be doing my wrap up for Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan. I read this series for the first time this summer and I absolutely loved it. I am so happy that I took the time as an adult to go back and read this very famous series because it was amazing. I'm a big believer that a book is good if it's perfect for kids that are eight all the way to kids that are 80 and that fits Percy Jackson perfectly. One thing I love the most about this series is that it really encourages a love of the Greek myths and Greek mythology. So I also want to discuss with you a lot of books for kids that are based on Greek mythology and explain all of the origin stories and the Olympians and all of the hero myths. So grab your favorite beverage as we discuss Percy Jackson. So what is Percy Jackson about? Well, Percy Jackson has been around for almost 20 years now. The first book was published in 2005 and the very last book came out in 2009. And I would say this is probably the second most famous modern children's series after Harry Potter. And I feel so bad because for the longest time, that's why I didn't want to read it. I'm like, ah, that's just the poor man's Harry Potter. I couldn't have been more wrong. I am so happy I went back and took the time to read it because it is amazing. I would say read these books just for Rick Riordan's sense of humor alone. I don't think I've ever read a series that just had a better sense of humor than Percy Jackson. I absolutely loved it. And just like Harry Potter, Percy is very prevalent in pop culture now. There have been two movies made about Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters. One of my favorite people, James Bond, Pierce Brosnan, is in those movies. He actually plays Percy's centaur teacher, Chiron. So I highly recommend those movies. But one way that people critique those movies is that Percy just seems a little too much of a teenager in those movies, where if you actually go back and read the books, Percy is more of a kid. And I would say that these books at the end of the day are mainly middle grade books instead of YA. There are certainly some YA themes in these books, but they are perfect for audiences all the way from maybe 10 to 15 and beyond like me. Percy Jackson is also on Broadway. So now that I've read this series, I would kill to go see the Broadway show. I have to find some friends or some kids that want to go with me because that would be so much fun. Broadway's back open now. Woohoo! I would love to go see Percy Jackson on the stage. And then now uh, Disney Plus is actually coming out with a new television show based on Percy Jackson. So a lot of people like me are very excited because we are hoping that the new TV series stays true to the books. And Rick Riordan has promised that it will. So basically Percy Jackson is about this young kid named Percy who on his 12th or 13th birthday, figures out that he's a demigod, that he is the son of Poseidon. And so actually one of his teachers turns into a monster. So he ends up going to this summer camp called Camp Half-Blood where he meets all the other children of the Greek gods, the other demigods, and they're all training these kids to be heroes, to learn how to battle monsters and save Olympus basically. And so he learns skills like swordsmanship and archery, and it's a lot of fun. I especially love all the other characters in Percy Jackson. Not only is Percy just a great character, I love his companion Grover, who is the Sadar, the goat guy. I also really love Annabeth. I think Annabeth is one of my favorite characters next to Hermione. I might actually like Annabeth now, maybe a little more than Hermione. I can't believe I'm saying that. Oh, strike me down with a lightning bolt. But I do. I love Annabeth so much. She is the daughter of Athena. And just like Athena, she is super smart, very brave. This girl can not only wield a sword, but she also loves books. Oh my gosh, I just love her. And she's smart in a very non-traditional way. She wants to be an architect. Annabeth is mainly Percy's best friend, maybe a little bit more. And she usually is kind of teaching him the ropes about how to be a good hero. Love her character to death. In fact, there are a lot of fantastic female characters in Percy Jackson. And that's one thing that you'll notice about the Greek myths too. 
so many amazing female characters. I love Clarissa, Aries' daughter. She is fantastic. She is so badass. And then also Zeus's daughter, Thalia. Talia. She is an amazing character as well. There is also a mortal girl named Rachel in this series, and I just, I love what happens to Rachel. So much fun. Percy Jackson is a fantastic series. Again, I just love everything about it. I love the plot. I love the characters. I really love Rick Riordan's sense of humor. But the main thing that I love about this series is that it encourages kids to go back and read the actual Greek myths. It encourages adults like me to do that too. And I really think that Rick Riordan did that on purpose. I love how he doesn't exactly give you all the backstory of the Greek gods. Kids have to go back and figure that out on their own. So fortunately, there are a number of companion books for kids about Greek mythology that make perfect additions to Percy Jackson. And I think they're great to read alongside of reading Percy Jackson. The first book that I highly recommend as a companion to Percy Jackson is Tales of the Greek Heroes by Roger Lancelin Green. I really enjoyed this book. I read it this week in preparation for this video. So much fun. Roger Lancelin Green is a part of the Inklings Club. So he was famously friends with C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. And the story goes is that C.S. Lewis gave Tolkien the manuscript to the Chronicles of Narnia first and Tolkien didn't like it. And so he went to Roger Lancelin Green and Roger Lancelin Green, fortunately for children's literature, said and told C.S. Lewis, no, don't listen to him. This is fantastic. Kids will love this. And so, in fact, he and C.S. Lewis were actually closer friends. And I think that Roger Lanson Green's contribution to children's literature is just basically all these retellings of the myths and legends and putting them together into these narratives and making them accessible for children, really. So not only does, did he write a book about the Greek myths, but he has one for the Egyptian myths, one on Norse mythology as well. He also has his own version of Robin Hood and um, King Arthur. So someday I would like to go back and compare his version of Robin Hood and King Arthur to Howard Pyle's version of Robin Hood and King Arthur. I think that would also make for a really interesting video. But but like C.S. Lewis and Tolkien, he writes this in a really cozy kind of epic narrative voice. He's the only writer that has tried to connect all the Greek myths together into one long narrative. And I, I'd have to say, I think he did a pretty decent job. Um, this is also a really good book if you're an adult like me and just kind of want to get a little more understanding of the Greek myths you forgot what Perseus and Medusa was about, you forgot um, what the Battle of Troy was all about, um, you forgot some of the labors of Hercules, this would be a nice one to pick up. One of the things you'll notice about reading the classics is that Greek mythology is referenced constantly in the classics, not only in Shakespeare, but in the Bible and other very famous books. So it is important for both children and adults to have kind of some working knowledge of Greek mythology. And I would say that Roger Lanson Green's book is a perfect one for that. So it starts off, of course, with the origin stories of Mother Earth and the Titans and the Cyclopses. Then we get into the stories of all the Greek gods and how they were eaten by their father Kronos and then of how Zeus became the leader of all the gods, about all of his children, both god children and hero children. And then it gets into, again, all of those classic myths like Jason and the Golden Fleece or Hercules. I really, really enjoyed this one and I think this is a perfect one for both kids and adults. The next one, and this is my absolute favorite version of the Greek myths for children, is the Dallaire's Book of Greek Myths. This again is a classic too, and I love Roger Lanson Green's version, but it's not illustrated. I wish it was where this one is, and this one is so beautiful. The illustrations, I will go ahead and show you some close-up shots of this one, but this really belongs in every child's library. It's that important. It's as important as Goodnight Moon in my opinion. 
Um, just the illustrations alone are reason enough to get this. So, so beautiful. And what the Delaires do, I think they were a husband and wife team that wrote the book and then illustrated the book, is they tell each story in one or two pages. So if you're the type of parent or teacher that just wants to read these stories aloud to children, that's why you need to pick up the Delaires Greek Myths because they're perfect for reading aloud with children. And children will really love those illustrations as well. So well done. This is organized beautifully. Again, it starts with the Titans. It goes into the 12 Olympians. It talks about all the famous hero stories, Jason, Theseus, Perseus, all the good ones. Um, it also has some extra supplemental material about the muses, especially. I really like the section on the muses. Just a beautiful book and it belongs in every child's library. If you're looking for a more modern picture book on the Greek myths, I would definitely go with this one, The Greek Myths, published by DK Press. And this one is actually written by a booktuber from Jean's Bookish Thoughts. And I heard her announce this last year that she was doing this and then I kind of forgot about it. And so I was at the bookstore recently and I was going through this and oh my goodness, everybody, this is a beautiful, beautiful book. I am so impressed by Jean and also by her illustrator, Katie Ponder. And the fact that it's published by DK, wow, my mind is blown because everyone knows that DK is one of the best educational publishers. So I really think this is perfect for the classroom. Very, very well done. I will go ahead again and show you some close-up shots of this one as well. But the way that Jean organizes the book is she starts off, she talks about ancient Greece. In the back of the book, there is a lot of supplemental material about the Greek vases, for instance. I'm so happy she described what the Greek vases were all about. She also talks about a lot of the monsters as well. That's fantastic. Um, about some of the things that the gods were named after, um, such as the planets and flowers and animals. And then one of my favorite things that she does is she has a pronunciation guide at the back of the book. Thank you for that because for years I've been trying to figure out how to pronounce some of these names, especially some of those Greek kings and princesses and stuff. Oh my gosh, those names can be hard. And to this day, I don't think I ever have pronounced Heracles, Heracles, Hercules correctly. So thank you for that. But it starts off, she describes the origin stories, the Titans, and she describes the 12 Greek um, gods. And one of the things that I like about this book when it comes to the Greek gods is there are full page color illustrations for each of the 12 Greek gods. Fantastic. And then she has gone back and she has um, also shown you some of the symbols that relate to each of the Greek gods. So here we have Hera with the peacock and then we have Zeus with the eagle and the thunderbolt. Really, really fantastic. And then they just go through and talk about all the heroes and then all of the myths. So this one was one of my favorites, the Amazons. I am such a goofball. I did not realize that the Amazons were the daughters of Ares. So I learned something by reading this book. I guess you could say that Wonder Woman is the daughter of Ares. So thank you, Jean, for teaching me that. But beautiful, beautiful book. And this belongs in every child's library as well. Another series that is based on Greek mythology, which I highly recommend for kids, is this Girl Goddess series by Joan Holub and Suzanne Williams. And these ones are so much fun. So I think the audience for Girl Goddess is a little bit younger than Percy Jackson. I would say around maybe eight or nine. Um, that would be the perfect age range for these books. The text is a lot bigger, a lot simpler, but the plot is really, really fun. So each of these books is based on one of the Greek goddesses. And, and the first one is called Athena and the Brain. How cute is that? And the plot is actually really interesting. I read this last night. So hilarious. It is about Athena and she gets a letter from her father, Zeus. He is the principal of Mount Olympus Academy and he invites her to come up to Mount Olympus and learn how to be a goddess with all of the other Olympians. And so she ends up becoming really good friends with Aphrodite and Artemis and Persephone. And then her bitter enemy is Medusa. She also enters a contest 
with Poseidon to see who can invent the best invention for mankind. And there is another class called Heroology, and she is given Odysseus as her Greek hero. And she kind of doesn't know what to do with Odysseus, and then her and Aphrodite accidentally start the Trojan War. So this is so much fun. Just a cute series for girls and guys too. Um, really fun, and each one is based off of a different Greek goddess. So the first one is about Athena, then there's one about Aphrodite, Artemis, Persephone, um, just a really cute series. For older kids, I wanted to recommend these new graphic novels based on the Iliad and the Odyssey by graphic artist Gareth Hines. Um, I've been seeing these the last couple of years and I just was curious about these, so I checked them out from the library. These are really fun. I am a huge fan of turning classics into graphic novels just to make these stories more interesting and more engaging for more kinesthetic and visual learners. I think this is perfect for the high school and middle grade level, especially if they're starting to study the Odyssey. I don't think this should replace um, Homer's epic, but I think this is a good companion to studying the Odyssey and the Iliad. So I'm assuming these are probably in every English classroom now across the world. They're really great. I wouldn't recommend them for younger audiences. I'm thinking the age range of 12, 13 is where I'd start with these um, if they're starting out to learn about the Odyssey and the Iliad. These are very detailed. They are feature scene by scene of the Odyssey and the Iliad. And as you can imagine, some of these panels are a little graphic in nature, especially the Iliad. I just recommend these for older audiences, but very, very nice. I highly recommend these by artist Gareth Heinz and I will show you some close-up shots of course really really neat and I do believe Gareth Heinz has also illustrated some graphic novels um, based on some of Shakespeare's plays as well and I think he did Beowulf as well and I think this is a nice way to introduce kids to Homer's epic poems and finally, no discussion about Greek mythology and children's books is complete without some mention of the Aesop's fables. So even though Aesop's fables are not related to the Greek gods or Greek mythology, they follow that same Greek oral tradition. In fact, they are thousands of years old, just like the Odyssey, just like the Iliad. And a lot of people believe that Aesop, just like Homer, was he a real person? Was he not a real person? Was he just this mythical figure a way to organize all of these oral stories. No one is exactly sure. Many people believe that he was a Greek slave, that he was blind, and that he traveled from town to town, and for a few gold drachmas he would just kind of spew these moral stories. And the fable just has this tradition that has lasted throughout literature. In fact, I did talk about a very famous fable a couple months ago, Animal Farm by George Orwell. And again, I love these allegorical stories because they're a way to describe the truth without really mentioning names. And so a lot of people think that's what Aesop was doing, that he was critiquing his owners, the, the masters of the slaves, but it was a way to critique these people without being punished. And so that's where they think the basis of Aesop's fables came from. Socrates was also very into the Aesop's fables. So this is a really great introduction for both kids and adults again into philosophy. I like Aesop's fables because you can use them in a variety of ways. You can use them with younger children and then all the way up to high school and college as well. So with younger kids, I would not read the Aesop's fables cover to cover unless you wanna bore kids to death. I would just find myself a nice illustrated edition like this one from Barnes and Noble. I like this edition, it's not my favorite. I've seen better editions for kids that are more picture book in style. In fact, I would love if Jean's illustrator, Katie Ponder, she did a version of the Aesop Fables. That would be fantastic. Um, basically, they're just these short one paragraph stories that have some moral to them. And one way that you can introduce them to kids is you can actually cover up the moral of the story. You can read the story to kids, they can read it to you. And then you can encourage some critical thinking and say, okay, what do you think this was about? And some of those famous ones, like the tortoise and the hare, and the ant and the grasshopper, I think they just make great stories for kids. And Disney has famously made a lot of cartoons based on Aesop's fables. So there's a lot you can do with this book um, and these stories. And I think every children's library needs some sort of copy of Aesop's fables as well. 
So thank you everyone for joining me for my wrap up of Percy Jackson. Again, I love this series. I'm so happy that I took the time to go back and read it. One of the best things about Percy Jackson is it just encourages a love of Greek mythology. If you want your kids someday to pick up this book, The Iliad and the Odyssey, you might want to pick up this book first, Percy Jackson, because it makes for some amazing reading. Thank you everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.